Well, we heard from Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith this morning, and it seems like they also believe the draft really starts in Atlanta after that number three pick by San Francisco. Is that kind of the national feeling at this point, Steve? It really is, and it has been for a while because you know the first three picks are going to be quarterbacks. You know, will Atlanta make it four consecutive? Will someone else come up to get Atlanta's pick, or will the Falcons stick there and take Florida tight end Kyle Pitts? That's kind of the feeling of what they're going to do. But no one really knows, and that's why there's so much intrigue in the Falcons pick. Actually, I think they'd like to keep the pick. Um, so they're just kind of waiting to see. Well, let's say the 49ers do select Mac Jones, right, that, that everyone is suspecting. Well, maybe a team really likes Trey Lance or Justin Fields, who are two quarterbacks who the Falcons like, and they come down and say, hey, look, we'll give you all of this to get that pick because we really like that player as well. The Falcons have to weigh that, but how far back do they want to go? And that's something that they discussed on the news conference as to if we do go back, will there be the type of player that we want in that slot still available? Will the compensation really be something worthwhile as opposed to taking the player who they really like and what they could get from that player in the short and long term? So they really don't know right now. And that's why, again, at four, that's when the, the things really get turning in the draft. We heard Terry Fontenot talk about how he doesn't really feel pressure going into um, tomorrow. He has, you know, the plan in front of him. But what's the importance of making, you know, that pick, getting an impact player at number four for the first year um, head coach, first year GM, and obviously given the kind of cap situation, they're a little bit strapped there. Yeah, he doesn't feel pressure now. Talk, let, let, let's call him. Let's call him at about 659 uh, p.m. Eastern time Thursday and see if he's feeling any pressure to make the right pick. I mean, they're, they're, again, they're prepared for a lot, but they're going to feel it because, as you said, they, they've got to nail it, whether they keep the pick or whether they make a trade. They've got to hit. They are counting, and they said this over and over, they are counting on some of these rookies to come in and contribute. They need some of these guys to play because their cap situation is so bad. They've got to get some rookies to play who can they develop on rookie contracts because they are going to be dumping some veteran contracts down the line and as you heard them say a couple of times today, some of those could include some, some big name players some franchise type of players with big deals that they're eventually going to have to part with to clear up their messy cap situation. More than half of the kind of media mock drafts throughout the landscape have Kyle Pitts coming to them at number four. But of course, if a quarterback is there, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, what's the kind of national consensus with the people you're talking to? Do they think Atlanta is going to go quarterback at number four or do they go for a Kyle Pitts or even a Penny Sewell? I think over the last few days, you've seen a trend more towards Kyle Pitts than a quarterback um, just because of what Arthur Smith likes to do offensively. And you heard him talk today and I, and I asked him the question on the news conference, do you take a player who's more scheme and culture fit? or someone who's been a leader or a captain who played against big competition. He said, scheme and culture fit. Well, bang, Kyle Pitts at that first pick fits everything they want. Terry, Arthur Smith loves to run two tight end and three tight end sets. He is a hybrid type of tight end where he can play wide receiver. He can play in line. He can play in the slot a lot like Travis Kelsey. So that's the fit. And then everything you hear about Pitts in terms of him being an incredible young man, the way he approaches practice every day, the way he approaches the weight room, that's next level stuff. And he's only 20 years old. So these are things that they're, they're also looking at. And again, I think that's why, again, things really seem to be trending towards Kyle Pitts being the fourth overall pick.